Welcome to Yacht Crew Vlogs, where we tell the stories of those in the yachting industry. A behind-the-scenes look that discovers the individuals in the industry, their history, their passions, and what inspires them to do what they do. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Yacht Crew Vlogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Rhea. I am your host, and I'm very pleased to welcome back my next guest, Kelly, or Captain Kelly, as she is well-known across the yachting universe. How are you? Uh, I'm good, Ria. Thanks for having me. It's so good to be here. i um, back again, actually. I hope you're well. Good. It has been quite a while since I've had the pleasure of interviewing you. You have kind of exploded across yachting. I know. I know. And I honestly, I have to owe, um, I have to owe a lot of things to you because it all, it all started with with our first interview, I had no idea that it, it was going to wind up like this, but um, here we are. What were you doing then? Back then, um, you weren't on Freddy. You're on Freddy now. What what boat were you captaining at that time? I think at the time I was uh, running up in the Great Lakes on a, on a corporate boat called Corporate Retreat, actually. Yeah. And I think I uh, actually how we got in in. Uh, contact with one another is it was me and um, my female mate that was running deliveries uh, from Florida up to the Great Lakes. And I look back at that now and I'm like, oh my God, when you look on a chart, you're like, that's literally from the bottom of the country to the top of the country. And so um, I believe Triton had gotten a hold of that and they did a story on us and then you did. And, and then after you and I did our first uh, radio show, it just with Yacht Crew Vlogs, it just, it took off. And then, and then, you know, since then I was like, oh my God, holy cow, Forbes got a hold of it. Business Insider got a hold of it, you know, and then yachting got a hold of it, boating got a hold of it. And I was just like, oh my gosh. And so, and then it was like, well, it grew. And then literally, Rhea, it's so cool because I have, I have people, uh, I want to say young adults, my, my favorite age group is young adults from having been a, a college professor before, but I get people from all over the globe, um, reaching out to me, asking me, how can I get into yachting or like the classroom, the captain's classroom series that I started where I'm trying to do just like short little three minute to the point, maybe how to come off tow, come on tow, uh, how to anchor, what to look for in radar, navigation, anything that you can think of that you might want to know in yachting. So obviously that's endless. And, and we just started that and are building and growing that. But I've got people now that have reached out to me about the captain's classroom and they've said, I learned more in your three minute video than I did in a week long class. And, and these comments are coming in or like, how do I go from commercial to yachting or how do I do that? So many different questions. And I get them literally no joke every day from all around the globe. And so then I was like, Oh my God, I have something here. I have to, I have to help these people. Like that's just my, I, you know me obviously very well now, but I'm hugely passionate about helping people, and and that probably just the way I raised, but also my teaching background, and I and I love to teach, and I love to help, and I love to share. So then I was like, oh my god, I've got something with this. I can't stop, and in fact, I have to build it, and I have to grow it, and that's where it kind of went. Then you know I explain it like this, and I'm on a micro scale. It was to inspire women to get into the deck department. But it has grown so much bigger than that. And now on a macro scale level, it's more about inspiring people to chase their dreams and giving them um, just, if all I have to do is share my story about where I came from and be very real and very honest about the things that I've gone through or I continue to go through, but I still come out on top. If all I have to do is share my story to inspire somebody to start the business or to pursue the dream or to to set higher and higher goals for themselves. If all I have to do is share my story, I'm going to do it. And so it's just kind of involved then into to a couple of things, inspiring people, but then also my classroom series, because I realize that that there needs to be more content out there available to young bodies that maybe can't afford to take the courses or they're not in an area where you can take the courses and I can cut out uh, all the BS and I can I can get to let's just face it we all are so busy now we have an attention span that's so much shorter so I can try to cut it down to like a three minute video and do like a part one or a part two if I need to or so that's kind of 
that's where I am now. So working on growing that and and uh, growing the classroom and growing speaking engagements and stuff like that. So, but I have to, I, I, I owe it to you because you got me started. Do you know what? If you weren't you, Kelly, you never would have achieved what you've achieved. So I, I have to say that is all on your shoulders. I remember two years ago, I had offered you a challenge at that stage. And I know where you started off and you've actually achieved higher and higher ranking tickets as a captain since. How mm-hmm. close are you to your Master Mariners Unlimited? <laughs> you know, it's something that I said, let me knock out my 3000 first. And which I'm, I'm just about done with that. And so then what's next for me is my unlimited. And when we talked a few years ago, you asked me that, like you said, you presented that challenge to me and I'm like, nah, no, I'll stop at my 3000 for the size boats that I run. That's really, that's plenty. That's overkill. And then literally after we got done with that conversation, I was like, damn her she knows me too well (laughs) and now I'm like okay so now I'm you know I'm looking up the requirements okay so what's it going to take for me to get my unlimited license you know and then I see a couple other women out there that are unlimited and I'm like all right I think I have to do this so yeah that's your fault that's your fault you know you know how I'm wired you know you present me with a challenge like that but you know what though that was very inspiring presenting presenting that challenge to me so to speak you presented it to me because you know i i i love a challenge and i love to learn and, and grow but it was also very inspiring to me because i i didn't think of myself as being an unlimited mariner i always thought i'll get my 3000 and which again you know i'm i'm right there just about to have that i get my 3000 and that'll be it for me uh you know there's no reason to go any bigger that's it that's that's plenty enough of a goal but then after you you inspired me and i was like no i I can't stop there so you know when we come back when we come back you know a few years from now and we do this again we'll see where i am i'll be i'll be probably be secretly cussing you because of the studies that i have to do and and all of the extra work and the all the behind the scenes i'll be like why did i let her talk me into this (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, you know what? You're one of these people that is really inspirational. You know, the yachting community has taken to you. The world in general has taken to you. As you mentioned, you have been featured in mainstream and yachting media straight across the face of the planet. It is an amazing way for people to see that you don't have to come from not only a seaside community, because of course mm-hmm. you're from Indiana. You don't have to come from a seaside community. You don't have to be sailing at the age of five, you don't have to come from a whole load of money. You can actually make this a career. And to think of it in a different light, because I think um, I think you get a fair amount of people that that young young individuals that look at this as as a free means of traveling the world. And especially if you're on a charter boat, you can definitely stack away some cash. Um, and, and I think some of them look at it as a temporary means. I'm going to go do this for a few years. I'm going to go see the world. I'm going to make a lot of friends, see a lot of things, make a lot of money. But I, I think people now are starting to realize, no, you really can make a career out of this and you can make one hell of a career out of this. So like my first officer, for instance, you know, he could, he could stay with me and, and progress his way up in size and boats and eventually have his own command or he can go back to merchant marine school which he he mentioned the other day he's like i think i think i'm gonna be here for maybe another year and then i'm gonna go back to school and i i was so excited when he said that like i just i just was like that i still get chills when when we talk about it and then and then i went into professor mode and i was like oh well let's get the program check sheet out and let's see what you (laughs) you know and i'm like i'm like let's do this let's see what all classes you need to take and what you already have credit for but my point is is you can make a career out of this and you can make one hell of a career out of out of out of yachting so i think maybe more people should come into it thinking not so much of uh you know when's my expiration date in here but do I want to do this? And and I think I think yachting needs to change though a little bit 
to make this a career for people because, you know, I know myself just being on a really busy boat, it's, it's, it's hard to get away and it's hard to get home or, I mean, hell, sometimes it's just hard to have a weekend off and go out. Sometimes you're so exhausted that you're like a weekend out. Uh, No, I just want to Netflix and chill. You know, so I think I think the other side of yachting also needs to do something to help make this a career because the 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 tempo and the pace of it almost kind of makes it where you really only can last a few years and if you want to build a family or if you just want to go back home and and see the parents and your brothers and sisters, it's hard to do that, you know? So maybe that could be a whole separate conversation as to what do we need to do on the other side to make it so that that this really could be, you know, a career and, and that you could still have some sort of a life as well. Well, there seems to be a bit of a lack of crew in the U.S. at the moment. Those kids that possibly, if they have been exposed to it, which a lot of them aren't, Mm -hmm. then it gets to the cost aspect of things. And they can't get in that way either. How do we deal with that? Well, it's interesting that you bring this up because it's something that I've been thinking about, too, is because a lot of the questions that I get from people are, one, just this is something I want to do. How do I get started? So then the conversation starts with, you know, get your basic training, but let's move to the person that's just past that. That's already got their basic training. And they're like, okay, I've got, I've got my basic training. I've got my security. I've got, you know, they went on and they've done silver service. or they've done their power boat course, you know, and they've, they've even gone a little bit above and beyond to make themselves more marketable than just having the basic training. And they're like, how do I get a job? You know? And I remember, I remember when I was graduating college and I would be looking for jobs and it would say experience required. Well, how the hell are you going to get any experience if no one ever gives you any experience? Yeah. You know, so so that's that's one thing. I think there needs to be maybe more um, captains and owners need to be more open to giving experience to the people that don't have experience. But one of the things that that I've said is, you know, get out there, day work. Well, what do they do if they've come down to Florida, they've done their basic training, but where they live is Indiana. How how do they get a job? Well, it's 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 tough because then they have to. OK, well, I say, OK, come down here, you know, get yourself into a crew house, go on to day work, one, two, three, see what kind of day work there is. Yes, for certain, if you are a good and hard worker just a few days of day working somebody's gonna see you and if you have a great work ethic with such crew shortage um they're gonna they're gonna snatch you up right away but that link is what you're mentioning how do they afford to go live in a crew house you know they're they're young they've just spent all their money on basic training how do they afford to fly let's say from south africa relocate to, to Lauderdale, live in a crew house. How, how do, that's the piece that I'm finding is tripping everybody up is that when they need to go to, to the hub or they, you know, they need to go to Antibes or they need to go to, to Lauderdale so that they're there so that they have a better chance of getting a job. I'm finding that that's a big piece that's limiting some of them is because they can't, they can't afford to relocate and can't afford to wait on a job. And I, I'm kind of stuck with that too. So then I'm like, um, how do we help? You know, yeah. what what do we do with that? Because you get people that genuinely want to get into the industry, but they can't because this is such a location specific job. What, what do they do? I mean, there are issues as well. I mean, for example, um, the Bahamas. I mean, you spend mm-hmm. a bit of time there yourself. Mm-hmm. There are local Bohemians that don't even know yachting really exists. How do you let them know about it? How do you focus on that? And then the issue is, how do you get them training? I'm so glad you asked this question. (laughs) Because the Bahamas, you know, yes, I probably spend, uh, Freddie, I get asked the question all the time, where's Freddie based out of? And I I giggle because I'm like, well, we're based out of Lauderdale, but we spent about eight or nine months in the Bahamas. So I guess one could say we're really based there. So I've spent a huge part of my career in the Bahamas. 
I love it. It's home away from home. I love the people. I've made some of the the the, the best friends there. Um, one of the captains and owners of, of of one of the shipping companies there, back when I was a baby captain and and needed some help with with navigate. Let's let's just be real here. The Bahamas has a lot of water, but it's really skinny. Um, so there's a lot of unexposed coral heads and stuff like that. So. There's been so many people have been helpful to me from captains in the shipping industry have helped me to people in the marina office to just people that I I meet out to dinner. And I've made such an amazing community, a a little family there. And the Bahamian people are just amazing. They're they're so genuine. They're so helpful. And I have felt for a long time that I've been going to the Bahamas and now I feel like as I'm I'm growing up and I'm not such a baby captain anymore, I have more of a voice and, and I can try to make a difference now. But I felt for a long time, and let's just let's just be real here. You know, the these yacht owners are taking their boats into the Bahamas, especially the charter vessels, and they're making money over there. You know, uh well, I mean making money in chartering is difficult, but at least defraying costs. But let's just call it making money. So here we are taking the wealthy man's vessel over there, making money in their country, we have to give back. We have to give back. We can't, even as crew members, we're going over there and lining our pockets with with tip money, with our paychecks, because of your beautiful waters, which allows us to do our job. So I have an amazing career because of the Bahamas. I have an amazing career because of the Bahamian people. So. I feel that I have to give back. I have to find a way to give back. So we did a little bit of a pop-up event uh, a while back at Bay Street Marina and invited some kids and they came, uh, had a bit of a panel of lectures and stuff like that. Well, I was, there was a couple of captains there, but I was the only uh, yachting industry captain there. And it that was a great opportunity for networking. So the, a lot of the people and it was, it was all ages come to me and spoke to me. And what I did was, was I'm very passionate and very um, strict that when I'm in the Bahamas, my day workers are Bahamian. If I'm going to, again, if I'm going to be there and I'm going to be making money in your country, I'm going to find a way to give back. So I'm U S flagged. So it's more difficult to have, um, it, it can be done. The foreign affairs manual have changed things now so that non-officer positions of um, foreigners can hold a position on a U.S. flag boat. But as you know, being U.S. flag is a little bit trickier, but I can make for damn sure that when I'm in the Bahamas, my day workers are Bahamian. And I do. I won't hire any other worker in the Bahamas unless they're Bahamian. It's one of my ways of giving back. Well, it's kind of spread a little bit. And now I've just got more and more people reaching out to me. And in particular, I had one here recently that just kind of kept kind of, you know, poking me a little bit on Instagram here and there, kind of like, hey, I'm still here. Hey, I'm still here. Finally, he messaged me on the right day and I asked him what his background was. And he said engineering. And I was like, oh, this is the perfect day. My engineers totally needs help right now. So now he's one of our day workers. So little by little, just my one boat has exposed quite a few Bahamians to the industry that didn't know anything about it. But let's go back to that. Why do they not know anything about the industry? I mean, it's 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 the number one, one of the tourism is, is what keeps the Bahamas going. And you look out in the water and there's all these motor yachts there. Why are there not more Bahamians uh, on these yachts making, making good money? You know, so... I've talked to Erica and Raquel there at Bay Street Marina, and and one of the things that we want to do is we actually just want to go to the schools and we want to go to the technical colleges and even the colleges and just say, hey, um, over here, you know, look over here. There's this amazing industry that you can be a part of, and here's what you need to do to be a part of it. And so I think just starting there and letting people know that the industry exists and then as more and more captains get more and more Bahamians opportunities, I think it's going to, it's just, it's just going to grow and it's, and it's going to flourish. And I, I think it would be an amazing, amazing way for Bahamians to, to earn a living. Who is your yacht management for Freddie? Ocean Independence. Yeah. 
Right. And what's it like working for them? I love them. I love them. They're great. I work, you know, I work directly with, um, with uh, obviously my charter manager and her assistant, Daphne and Casey, and they're awesome. Um, you know, they, they, they've seen Freddie go through a couple different captains because of the, the tempo of, of, of our schedule. You know, we, we probably do in about 20 weeks of charter a year, which if you think about it and there's 52 weeks in a year, you know, that it doesn't really allow us any time off. You think, Oh, well, you know, takes us a day to break down the boat, two days to get it ready. And then, so, you know, that leaves us just like a day in between charters, uh, you know, and of course that's going to um, be filled up with, you know, the oh shit stuff that we have to fix. So we're a pretty busy boat. So as you can imagine, you know, Daphne and, and Casey have been through a few different captains and, and I've been with them for assuming, almost two years here soon. And they're amazing. They're, they're just they're awesome ladies. They've really taken the time to learn my personality, to learn my quirks, to, you know, know, um, and my crew as well, you know, is this potential client going to be good, you know, for Freddie's boat? Cause we're a really active boat and we like to go and we like to play, you know, and she knows my, my personality and, and they're also very supportive, you know, when I have to call them up and I'm really stressed out and I need somebody to talk to and I'm, you know, thrown a, a, a pint sized temper tantrum they 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 listen and um they're just awesome they really are you know they hear what i've got to say they pay attention to what i want to do to make the program better or what do i need you know and then and then uh in in the last few months i've met uh liz Berriagola and she has been oh my god supportive of me um any it i she has not missed a single post on social media to like or comment or a thumbs up. She's she just a very here. happy person. She is. She's she's well, very, very so happy. happy. And she has just been so supportive of me being a female captain, being a captain in general, being on a busy charter boat. So supportive of me trying to reach out there and get more people involved and to inspire them and to encourage them and to educate them. She's been, I mean, just one of my biggest cheerleaders and she's just been, I I can't say she's just a happy person. She's so cheery. She's so happy. She's so supportive. And uh, she's just, she's made sure anything, anything that I need, you know, she's, she's been there to back me up any, any way to move forward with, uh, with what I'm trying to grow, you know, to inspire people, you know, cause her background obviously is, is marketing. She's helped me with that. She just, um, the whole team there, uh, is amazing. They really, really are. I can't, I can't say enough good things about being with OI as we call them ocean independence. Yeah. I, I have to be honest. I mean, I've done a series of interviews with OI and there's a special difference about that company. You know what it is? <laughs> you can be real. You can be yourself. I yeah. mean, look, I'm my I'm myself regardless. It's just th- that's one thing that I've always been is just like you, like you. I've just this this is this is me. This is I've always maintained being my genuine, authentic self. But they make it so much easier to be yourself and to even open up and to express yourself a little bit more. And they just there's no they they're very genuine. Um, and they allow you to be your genuine self as well. And and I think that might be the difference. They're just, they're really, really good, really good people. We really do enjoy seeing you across social media and all your little tidbits. And congratulations on achieving what you've achieved so far, not only personally, professionally, but as well the ability for you to reach out to so many more people around the world. We see yachting in general, as sort of this upper crust, untouchable type thing. I think that's how yachting media portrays it. I think that's how media in general portrays it. But mm-hmm. thanks to you, you've brought it to a human level or they, they relate. And it, mm-hmm. it could be another farm girl in Indiana, <laughs> right? No, well, thank you. I mean, and again, I, you know, I've said it several times, I owe many things to you. 
And um, even even when I'm walking around the docks here in South Florida and people are like, hey, do you know Rhea? And I was like, oh, yeah, Rhea of Yachting International Radio. Of course I know her, you know. And, and you know, and then we laughed and we giggle and I'm like, eh, it's, it, it, it's all her fault. <laughs> but no, I, I say that in fun. But what I mean is it's it, you're hugely responsible for for launching me in this direction and encouraging me to to do what I'm doing, because I never would have thought social media for me. I just never but it's, it does, it works for me because it still allows me to teach and encourage something that I'm hugely, pat- I just like to help people. I do. I like to help people and I like to let people know and, and be, and be real. You know, um, one of the things Liz there, oh, I was saying, she was like commenting on my social media and she's like, you know, that one post that, you know, you were just having a tough day and, and, and you turned the camera around on yourself and you just really let people know how you were thinking and feeling. And she's like, I liked that. She's like, you don't try to sugarcoat it or butter it up in any way. And and so I, I want to try to do even more of that. You know, what I'm really feeling or thinking that day or what I'm going through, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, but still encourage people. This is an amazing industry. But even if, Rhea, even if it isn't this industry, it could be starting a business of some sort that, You've always wanted to, it doesn't have to be just this industry. It's just chase your dreams, go after your goals, step out of your comfort zone and don't doubt yourself because you can, you can do it. And, and that's, that's more my motto than anything. Kelly, I have to say thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me back. It's been a minute. I know we chat all the time, but it's been a minute since we've done one of these. Thanks for having me back. I always love it. It's always a pleasure. And I have to say, if you're looking to charter Freddie and as well meet Captain Kelly in person, Ocean Independence is the place to head. Ah, thank you. You've been watching another edition of Yacht Crew Vlogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Rhea. I have been your host. We'll see you again next time. (laughs) 